Okay, 4.7. Use isosceles and equilateral triangles. Let me fill all this in. I apologize that it got cut off in the copy. Okay, a couple of vocab terms. Legs. The legs of an isosceles triangle are the two congruent sides. Now, I ho hopefully you guys remember that when we're, when we're refer referring to a right triangle, the legs are the two sides adjacent to the right angle. It's different when you're looking at an isosceles triangle. In an isosceles triangle, if these are the two congruent sides, these are the legs. Okay? Now the vertex angle, the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is the angle formed by the legs. So in this case, it would be this angle here. It's the angle in between the two legs. Vertex angle. The base, the base of an isosceles triangle is the side that is not a leg. So if these two sides are legs, this is the base. It's the side that's across from the vertex angle. The base angles, the base angles of an isosceles triangle are the two angles adjacent to the base. So this angle and this angle would be the base angles. Okay. Theorem 4.7. Base angles theorem. First, let me draw in some of the stuff that got cut off. Okay. This is an A. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. So, if AB is congruent to AC, then angle B is congruent to angle C. Basically, if you have an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent. This is the base angles theorem. Likewise, if, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. So if these two angles are congruent, then these two sides have to be congruent. Okay, let's do an example. In triangle, FGH, um, the G is up here, H is down here, FH is congruent to GH. Name two congruent angles. So, if, it, if FH is congruent to GH, by the base angles theorem, this angle, and this angle have to be congruent. Angle F and angle G. They're the angles opposite the congruent sides. Okay, let's go on to page two. Corollary to the base angles theorem. If a triangle is equilateral, that means all the sides are equal, then it is equiangular. That means all the angles are congruent. Likewise, if a triangle is equal equiangular, then it is equilateral. Find the measures of angles, angle R, angle S, and angle T. Okay, the diagram shows that triangle RST is equilateral. Okay, notice all three sides are three meters, therefore all the sides are congruent equilateral. Therefore, by the corollary to the base angles theorem, RST, triangle RST, is equiangular. So, if all the sides are congruent, all the angles have to be congruent also. Which means that all three of these angles are equal. Now, if you remember, all three angles in any triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So, this angle plus this angle plus this angle adds up to 180. So if I were to take one of these angles and multiply it by 3, I'm going to get 180 degrees. Which means that each individual angle has to be 60 degrees. Because that's the only way that all three of them will add up to 180. Alright, example 3. Find the values of x and y in the diagram. Step 1. Find the value of x because triangle JKL is 
equiangular. It is also equilateral. And KL is congruent to KJ. I'm sorry. It's congruent to KJ, but that's not the side we're looking for. We are looking for um, JL. There we go. This side is congruent to this side. It's also congruent to this side, but these two sides are the ones we're looking for. So if this is 8, then X also has to be 8. Okay, now find the value of Y because angle JML is congruent to angle MJL. LM, that's this side, equals LJ. And the triangle is isosceles. You know that LJ equals 8. We already determined that this side equals 8, and we just determined that this side has to equal this side, because the base angles are congruent. So, once again, LM equals LJ, definition of congruent segments. So 2Y has to equal 8, because X equals 8. I substituted 2y for lm, and I substituted 8 for lj. If I divide both sides by 2, y equals 4. All right, let's go on to the last page. Quilting. All right, let me draw in what's missing over here. Um, this is a C... Ah, let me just start over. Good enough. Okay, and there's a dash here and an angle here. Okay, explain why triangle ADC is equilateral. And then show that triangle CBA is congruent to triangle ADC. Okay, by the base angles theorem, angle DAC is congruent to angle DCA. We know that these two sides are congruent, therefore these two angles also have to be congruent. So, triangle ADC is equiangular because all three of these angles are congruent. By the corollary to the converse of the base angles theorem, triangle ADC is equilateral. All right, now in a, in a proof, you don't have to write out the whole name if you don't want to. You could just say, if a triangle is equiangular, it's also equilateral. And I would accept that. That's totally fine. Okay? But in this case, because it's fill in the blank, that's what they're looking for. By th so, that, so that's part A. Now we need to show that these two triangles are congruent. By the base angles theorem, angle ABC is congruent to angles uh, ACB. That's these two angles because we know that all these all these sides are congruent. They're equilateral. It's, the triangle is equilateral. And if these two sides are congruent, then these two angles also have to be congruent. So, triangle CBA is congruent to triangle ADC by the AAS congruence theorem. All right. I'll let you guys do the checkpoint, and that's it.